Hey friend, welcome to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. I'm Michael McCurry, your host. I greatly appreciate the opportunity I have to speak to you today. I made mention earlier this week that this week of broadcasts is a little different, a little bit odd compared to the usual. The reason for that is, is because I'm spending a few days with family, but I still wanted to speak with you folks. And so I'm taking a few moments right now to talk to you here on the Bible Tract Echoes radio program. And I'm so thankful I am. The scenery, the setting that I have behind me is absolutely beautiful. I'm on the deck of our Airbnb, spending a few days with family and friends. And the children are playing on the other side of a very large pane of glass. And so if you hear a low rumble of rambunctious children, that would be why. And if I get distracted just a little bit today, that would be why. It's also just a little bit cold. Now, it's not quite as windy as it may have gotten a little bit in past days, but thankfully right now the wind chimes on the deck are staying quiet and I'm enjoying the fact that my fingers don't feel like they're about to fall off. Now, all that being said, let me encourage you to go to BibleTracksInc.org because I need to rectify a mistake that I made this week because today I'm going to discuss something that I should have talked about on Monday. You can figure out at BibleTracksInc.org that we have a brand new Christmas gospel tract. I meant to talk about this on Monday and it was my fault. It escaped my memory. And so I'm going to do so today. I'm actually going to share this gospel tract with you. You can order it at BibleTracksInc.org today. It's called A History of Christmas. If you'd like to hear this gospel tract and know what, know what it's all about, let me do that for you right now. Again, BibleTracksInc.org. You can go there right now and get this new gospel track called A History of Christmas. Now realize our gospel tracks are free as the Lord provides. Before I dive into this gospel track with you right now, I've got to tell you one item that I'm thankful for today. And today, I'm thankful for time away with family. It's such an amazing opportunity to spend time with family and friends. I hope you had the opportunity last week. And I hope coming up here in Christmas time, you'll get to spend some time with family as well. Now, a history of Christmas. I had the opportunity to write. And this gospel tract is a little bit of an amalgamation uh, from some different sources, but I was able to put the final touches on it here. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it. Here we go. A history of Christmas. Christmas is a wonderful time with a rich history. The chill in the air, the merry spirits, and the joy that accompany this season often provide a pleasant respite from the craziness of life. Christmas also allows us to reflect on the past and what has brought us to this point. Before we look back at Christmas's history, enjoy these interesting facts about the most wonderful time of the year. For instance, Jingle Bells wasn't originally a Christmas song. Did you know that? This catchy song was initially about an entirely different holiday. James Lord Pierpont penned the tune One Horse Open Sleigh for his church's Thanksgiving concert back in the mid-19th century. Then, in 1857, the piece was re-released under the title we recognize today, Jingle Bells. Along the way, it has become one of the most popular Christmas tunes of all time. Here's another Christmas fact about why we love Christmas trees. You can thank Prince Albert of Germany for our evergreen addiction. He presented a tree to his wife, Queen Victoria of England, over 170 years ago, and a long-term tradition was born. How about this? Christmas wasn't always on December 25th. While Christmas marks the birth of Jesus Christ, the precise date of the momentous occasion is unknown. The Bible doesn't mention December 25th, and some historians say Jesus may have been born in the spring. The question for you is, would you want to move Christmas to April? I think most people are pretty fond of where it is right now. One more Christmas fact, Christmas wreaths illustrate a heart breaking sacrifice. The Christmas wreaths we often place on our doors began as a symbol of Christ's brutal death on the cross. The red berries represent the blood that he shed. The circle of holly symbolizes the crown of thorns Jesus wore at his crucifixion. 
Christmas wreaths may look beautiful now, but they commemorate his cruel death. Which Christmas fact that you just heard was the most surprising or interesting to you? What if you discover, though, that there is one Christmas history fact that we haven't yet shared that's more remarkable than any you just heard? It has to do with the most incredible Christmas gift ever given. What is the truth of the most significant fact in Christmas history? The greatest gift of all time is Jesus Christ, God's Son, who was born to bring salvation to all who will receive him. Despite the commercialization and materialistic flavor that this time of year has gained, Christmas is still the day we commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago. Today, young and old alike eagerly anticipate exchanging gifts and spending time with the family during this time of year, but the gifts exchanged at Christmas should serve as a reminder of the greatest gift ever given. What is the reason for this gift? Often, a gift given at Christmas is based on what a person needs. The gift God gave to the world met the need of every person that has and will ever live. But why do we need this incredible gift? The Bible tells us that we are all sinners. We have all done wrong, and because of our unrighteousness, we are separated from God and deserve eternal death. As it is written, the book of Romans tells us, there is none righteous, no, not one, and for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 10, and 23. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear, Isaiah 59, verse 2. And for the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23 says. To meet our need for God's gift of salvation, God wrapped his son, Jesus Christ, and presented him as a gift to the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life john 3:16 god gave us this gift of his son because of his great love for us we've seen the reason for this gift but there are requirements for this gift aren't there Webster's Dictionary defines a gift as something of value voluntarily given from one person to another without receiving anything in return. God gave his son without requiring any payment. He gave his son to die on the cross for our sins. 2 Corinthians 9.15 states, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. This gift cannot be measured in value. It can never be destroyed or broken. This gift is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The second half of Romans 6.23 says, Jesus willingly gave himself to meet our need for salvation. Galatians 1.4, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. A true gift, friend, is given freely. God does not ask you to do anything to earn salvation. It is a free gift. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 2.8. We've seen the reason, the requirements of this gift. How about the receiving of this gift? When we give gifts, we expect them to be received. No one gives a present desiring for the gift to be rejected. However, Many people reject God's gift. Receiving God's gift grants you eternal life in heaven, but refusing to accept God's gift results in the only other option, an eternity in hell. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God, meaning hell, abideth on him. John 3.36 You can receive his gift by turning from your sins and trusting him as your personal Lord and Savior that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 9 and 10. The question today is this. Would you like to make the vital decision of accepting God's gift of salvation for yourself? 
If you feel convicted to make this decision, don't wait. As with any gift, the free gift of salvation isn't yours until you accept it. You can talk to God right now. Tell him you know you are a sinner and need his forgiveness. Tell him you believe Jesus died to save you from sin and you're willing to turn from sin and ask Jesus to come into your life as your personal savior. We've seen the reason, the requirements, the receiving of this gift. Now, lastly, the relationship of this gift. If you just prayed and accepted God's gift, you can now celebrate the most incredible Christmas in your personal history. You have become a part of God's family. We, I, would love to welcome you to the family and rejoice with you. I'd love to send a free gift, maybe a Bible, some additional material to help you grow in your new relationship with Christ. I would love to hear from you if you made that decision or if you have more questions. Maybe something I said today wasn't quite clear. Maybe you have a comment. Maybe you have something that you'd like to add to this discussion. Or maybe you just want to get your eternal destiny settled once and for all. You can contact me today. Text me at this phone number. Are you ready? Get a paper. Grab a pen. Maybe open up your phone so you can take this phone number down. Are you ready? 30933. One six seven two four zero. Again, that number is three zero nine three one six seventy two forty. I'd love to hear from you. If you need help finding the History of Christmas Gospel Tract on our website, you can contact me as well. We just got a big batch of them in. We're excited about sending them all over the country. And Lord willing, many people will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as a result of this brand new Christmas tool. If you order today, they should definitely arrive in time for Christmas. Now, in coming days, tomorrow, I'm going to pick back up our theme for this week, Never Satisfied. Lord willing, we may even finish our Bible study on this topic of never satisfied, content but not complacent. We may finish that tomorrow because on the last day of this week, I may, we'll have to see how the Lord leads, I may for the first time introduce you to my wife, Miss Rebecca McCurry may be joining me on a little bit of a, how shall we call it, a vlog version, a video log version of this broadcast as I show you a glimpse inside the life of an evangelist. I hope you'll join me for that broadcast. Join us tomorrow as we talk about Never Satisfied. And on Friday, I introduce you to Miss Rebecca McCurry. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's my grand pleasure to speak to you. Have a great day for his glory and God bless.